Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Luno and today I'll be showing you how I built this straw hat themed keyboard. But before that I'd like to give a huge shout out to the Capco for sending me their honey set. It includes a 40 by 90 anti-slip rubber desk mat which is 3mm thick. Also a super comfy full sized wrist rest with an anti-slip bottom and finally the beautiful full set honey keycaps. These are PBT keycaps with a thickness of 1.5 millimeters and they're super durable. I'd also like to thank Millidrix for sending me their new stabilizers, the WS Stabs V3. I got the silicone version which has the TP material inside the stabilizer stem to avoid rattly noises. These are pre-lubed screw-in stabilizers and the wires are designed to be clipped in from below to avoid wire pop-ups. So without further ado, Let's get on with the video. So what I have here is my old dismantled Keychron K8 Pro. It's currently black in color, but I'm going to paint the board yellow and the sides red so it resembles Luffy's straw hat. So before painting, I have to clean everything and secure the parts which can likely be damaged by the paint. This includes the power board, so I had to remove it and keep it in a safe place until the paint job is completed. It's always good to dismantle all the parts you can, so you can avoid uneven drying time in the nooks and corners, and basically have a better result. Now the second step involves sanding. A lot of sanding. It isn't necessary, but if you do it, it'll give you a way better result because paint sticks evenly and you can even avoid bubbles in some cases. I highly recommend you do it if you are to ever spray paint. And I promise you, you won't regret it. Now I couldn't remove the batteries and I'm not even sure if the paint will do anything to it, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. So I secured it with masking tape just in case. I also taped the holes from the feed mounts so nothing spills over and hopefully avoid any complications later. Now that the board's done, I continued sanding the rest of the parts. Like I said before, I highly recommend you don't skip this part because uneven surfaces can cause the formation of bubbles. And if it does lead to bubbles, all you can do is wait for it to dry and sand it off and repeat the whole process, which is a hassle. So don't skip this part unless you're actually trying to maintain the initial rough surface of anything you're painting, because I understand that can be a preference. Now that the sanding's done, I have to prepare an area to paint. It's ideal to do it outdoors in a well-ventilated area, because the spray paints can be toxic. So as for me, I cut out the bin liners I had at home and just taped it around on my balcony so I don't destroy the floor. I live in an apartment so this is the best I can do for now. The bin liners are pretty light so the wind can mess it up even if you have taped it on the floor. So it's always better to use something heavier on top as an extra layer. Now that it's ready, I used the flat white primer so the final results would be even better. Primers aren't always necessary but it provides a solid foundation for your paint and avoid any unevenness. I did the second coat within the hour and left it to dry for the next 48 hours. So this is the third day and the primers have completely dried by the time. But as for me, I was suffering from a really bad cold during the time and I made several mistakes. As you can see, I even forgot to wipe the camera lenses before recording. But the parts were ready, so I had to dust them off before painting. I used a scarlet red paint for the sides and this paint was actually pretty cheap compared to the other brands. I was really happy with the color and the paint was coming out pretty well. I also painted the screws because I didn't want any other color to stand out. So the reason I covered it with the box here is because the area is pretty small and I had to paint the board yellow and basically avoid any setbacks on the work I just did. 
So I use the Rust Olim Transport Yellow for the plate and the board. The paint process is the same as the sides and this came out just as I hoped it would and the color was a really good choice. I also did the screws for the plate as well and it was actually impossible to paint them evenly because they were so small. After that was done, I finished the sides I had for garden earlier. An hour later and they were looking really good except for that little bump. Now this can be a cause of several reasons but the first thing you have to do is to not do anything. Just let it dry for a day and once it's dried you can sand it and repeat the whole process again. Day 7 and the boards are completely dried. And now it's time for some designs. I decided to go with the vinyl sticker of the goat. And it was actually really hard to get it in the right position because I didn't have a proper marker. And after almost an hour, it came out pretty well. As for the plate, I decided to cut out a simple straw hat silhouette from a vinyl film with a coin and a blade. I chose the color white for this design to signify Ace's vivre card on the actual straw hat. And moving on to the next step, I used a satin clear coat to protect the paint and the stickers as well. The satin coat gives a matte look and gives a different feel to the touch. But most importantly, this protects the paint inside from scratches and other damages. Now all that's left to do is let it dry and it's a smooth process here and now, or so I thought. It was only after 7 days I realized I had to paint a portion of the bottom of the sides as well. So I had to sand everything off again. And I elevated it with the tape and repeated the whole process again. After everything dried, I pasted another straw hat sticker on one of the sides and finished it with a clear coat as well. This is day 14th. All paint jobs have been completed. Now all there's left to do is to prepare the PCB and assemble the build. Firstly, I removed the old stabilizers so I can clean the board. I also bought some pour on switch pads and stabilizer pads for the build. I've never used them before but some reviews online says that it makes the sound popular. So hopefully it works. The pour on pads does give some cushion, so I think it'll definitely help improve the sound profile. Now it's time for the WS Tabs V3. Like I said, it's pre-lubed and it has TP material inside the stabilizer stem. But since I'm not gonna open this board again in the future, I'm going to be taking some extra measures. So I removed the factory loops with alcohol wipes and pasted a thin layer of tape on the two ends of the wire and lubed it with Crytox 205 grade 0. But I had knocked my camera out to the side and I hardly recorded anything. So once I realized I didn't have any proper footage on the stab installation, I was just tightening the stabilizer screws for content. So anyways, the WS stabs have been installed along with the pour on pads. And moving on, I used three layers of painter's tape for the tape mod. The tape mod is the easiest mod in my opinion to improve the sound profile of your keyboard. All you have to do is just paste tape on the back of your PCB. Painter's tape and masking tape are highly recommended by many online and it's found that the number of layers can make a difference in the sound profile. I also had to poke some holes since I had to get the screws through the PCB. Now that the PCB is ready to go, I just have to assemble the board. Once the cables have been connected, at this point, you're supposed to connect it to your computer and check if the board works before you tighten the screws, which I didn't do. 
I just couldn't wait to put the plate to see how it looks. So I just placed the plate foam along with the plate and tightened the screws. And it's already looking super nice. Let's now get the sides installed. Every time I add one in, I can't help but get excited because the build's coming together just as I had imagined. The bare bone is finally complete. So the next thing, the switch. I needed something yellow and linear and Akko V3 Pro switches was just perfect for the build. They felt great right out of the box. So I moved on to the final step, the Capco Honey Keycaps. And with this, the build is finally complete. We'll do a sound test, but before that, here's a montage of the Straw Hat keyboard. <laughs> 